Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sportscast, the show in lockdown where we discuss sporting topics and debate all about different things going on. Should Liverpool be crowned champions or should there even be a relegation in the Premier League? All of that will be discussed today. So, on today's show, we have Scotty Powell, who opposes Hello. for relegation, <laughs> and we'll have more of that. Um, uh, I wouldn't say I oppose well. relegation. <laughs> oh, I mean, there we go. We, it's, we, it's we will get to it, but we'll get to it. We'll get to it. On the other hand, we have Jacob <laughs> Fernell, who is against relegation. Uh, says the season should be voided in terms of fairness. And then also we have Andrew Lewis, who has interviewed two other people, may I add. Finners and also James Baldwin. So welcome to the show as well, Andrew. Thank um, you. Let's get straight into it. So Premier League is probably the, the, the scenario that everyone is talking about. Uh, things are saying it's not official, but there's been a bit of leaks for the 8th of May that were meant to get a decision of what is going to happen. Some probably because they're already voting now. Obviously, we saw West Ham are opposing that as against playing at home, though. Uh, but it seems like they want to at least carry on and play the season. So, thoughts, guys? What, what, what do we reckon? Um, it's been a while. Uh, in terms of the season, <laughs> should it carry on? Let, let's throw that one out first. Go on, He's going. You want me to go? Let's go, go, on, go. Let's go I, Scotty. I, I reckon if you can get get it done, there should be a deadline. I think the deadline should be August. If it can't get done by August, like scrap it completely and do it on a points per game basis to set the season up. If that's not happened, if we like change it, maybe next year we have no relegations and uh, Leeds and West Brom go up. And it just means that next season, six or five, whatever it is, have to get relegated or yeah. we do a relegation playoff. I think that's the fairest way to do it. As much as being a Blues fan, I hate Villa and everything. You've got to do it a fair way. Uh, you've got to do it fair, but you know, I think that's probably the best thing to do. Jacob, what do you think? I think... I don't think teams should get relegated. I think I think the season should just be voided or, or teams come up. And that's not just because of Villa. I just think they should be anywhere. I think what they did in Scotland where they sent a team down when they had a game in hand, I think if you did that here, it'd just be like loads of legal battles. So I don't think you could do that anyway. But I don't know. I think you start the season again on the 8th of May or, or whenever, why well, in June, if they make that decision. If one player gets ill, they'll just stop it anyway because they're obviously going to tell both of them teams to to not go out and stuff. Then you got like all the management, the physio, uh, the media as well. Mm. Obviously, the media are going to be with each other. So I I just don't see how it's going to work. But obviously, it is, it is a bit harsh on like Liverpool and and the teams coming up. But I just don't see how they're going to restart it and the effect that it's going to have next season. Even like with the Euros and stuff, if the players are going to get a break or not. So I'm not sure how they're going to do it, really. So you, so you don't think Liverpool should win the league at all? You think as much as that they've only need like one game with a win, you think they shouldn't win it no, at I think all? They, they should win it because they will. They would have won it anyway. You can't just give it them, really, can you? So, but they would have won it. And they still had to play us like Villa, so that was obviously going to be like three points anyway. So it's it's a tough one. I don't know. I think uh, I don't think you can just give it them. But obviously they they would have won it anyway. But I just think for the teams going down, even like Villa with a game in hand, if you just gave Liverpool champions and sent the teams down at the moment, I don't think you could do that either. Really. So I think the only way they can do it is just to avoid it without upsetting everyone. Well, apart from the the team's coming up in Liverpool. Ooh, interesting. I mean, I personally... Th- uh, what were you going to say, sorry? I was going to say, what do you think of the, the, the scenario? Well, I personally think they should continue the season. Um, if you look at other sports, uh, for example, the Formula 1, they look like they're going to be continuing that sport, even though they're travelling the whole world. And I feel like if they can get a, a sport that's going to travel the whole world, then surely they can do a, a sport that's only based in one country. And... Yeah. I mean, if you look at the, if they do void it, I mean, look at the the French league. They, I mean, they this Paris Saint Germain they gave them the title even though they've cancelled it. So, if that does happen, then I assume they're obviously going to give the give the title to Liverpool. What has happened with say, the Liga? I know in terms of the relegation, is there a relegation in Liga? Was or has PSG say, yeah, just been handed? I don't. I'm not. This... I'm not sure. I've only heard right. that they've cancelled it and that PSG have been given the title again. In all but, fairness, uh, they know. were going to win it. 
Oh, like, no, we're yeah. going to win the title. Could you, say the, same for Belgium, could, you, could you say the same for Liverpool? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. They, they are going to win it. So I, you might as well give them the title. I think there was a game. I think it was a game to uh, literally one game. They needed Liverpool was the three points for them to secure the title anyway. Um, so in, in that perspective. But then what would you do about people fighting for, again, obviously you say the same about the relegation battle, but what about Europa League, Champions League? It's still quite tight, if you like, in there. Mm. What would you do about there? Do you throw, you go, I don't know, all, all the kids used to do that in like the soccer tournaments, mini soccer tournaments all in the day. Do you do something like that? Maybe not all, obviously, the games in the day, but then maybe do go to St. George's Park. You've got that big facility. Maybe you could social distance there. I don't know. I'm just saying there's loads of different places that they could go Although that some some uh, because the one even though there's no crowd, a lot of the football clubs are opposed to actually having their games played at home just because of like they're used to it and also I don't know they, yeah I say atmosphere there's going to be no atmosphere but you know yeah. you know what I mean like they're playing at their home ground so they've got their own kind of um, kind of feel to it. Uh, what do you what would you be about in terms of if they do carry on with the games? Would you think that they should do like different tournaments and things to keep the season going or do you reckon? Behind closed doors, just stay at their own games. I think the Champions League has to go ahead because there's teams in there like PSG and Man City that, you know, they haven't won the Champions League. I don't know if PSG have won it years ago, but and they, they, they've still got it off of grabs and, like, it could be their year. And I think to completely scrap it is just wrong. Like, maybe next season if they could, like, scrap a tournament like the Carabao Cup then maybe that could allow for extra games next season for whatever they choose to do. I don't know, but I want to. I don't know what your verdicts are on that because obviously Andrew, you're a Wolves fan, and Wolves are in the Europa League for like the first time in years. Yeah. So what's your verdict on that? Well, I mean, from my point of view, I feel like they should continue it, um, just because you know we worked hard to get here, and now we're here and we can't really show ourselves, like prove ourselves, if you know what I mean. I'm like, we have a pretty good chance of winning it as well. And if we win it, then we could end up in Champions League. So these sort of, um, this does cause a problem for us. But uh, I feel like with um, with the Europa League, they could probably continue it, but it's it would be a problem because obviously you've got to get loads of European teams all over the, all over Europe just traveling everywhere. And agree to um, it. Obviously, yeah. different, you have different FAs um, over Europe. So if Fra France are obviously against it, so if there's any French clubs in either the Europa League at the moment, or even the Champions League, then surely that means that they can't compete in the competition. Well, that again, like you said, Scotty, that would then put Linz against PSG, who then have a good opportunity of winning. So it, it becomes a very messy situation for me. I think personally, if it comes too much of a messy situation, you just don't do it. I think yeah. Champions League and Europa League, are the, as, as much as it's probably one of the best competitions in the world um, and it's most exciting, if it becomes where you have to vote and depend on other people's clubs and other people's countries, it's just going to get a messy situation. But in terms of the maybe, Premier League, I think they probably could carry on. Yeah, I mean, maybe like next season you could like just get rid of the group stage or something like that and put the teams that have got... Yeah, put the teams that have got to like certain situations because what is it now? Champions League quarterfinals, Europa League. Put them like give them a bypass to that and put less teams in the group stage so that they can the new teams can work their way up to the situation that the old teams that have like got to the stage that they're currently at can go head to head in them like games. I think that might be the best way to do it. Jacob, what do you reckon? About the Champions League, was yeah, it? Yeah, and the Europa League just in general as well. Um, it's, it is tough because like, even like with Wolves and stuff, because I actually I actually thought they were going to win it like this year because they did look good in Europe. I think uh, if if the Premier League carries on, and obviously like because France have stopped anyway, it's that thing of will them teams have an advantage next season because obviously they've got this time off now. So I don't know. If, way. Yeah. I, I don't know how how they can do it because. Teams are just going to complain that people have had more time off or whatever. So unless UEFA are going to do those like mini tournaments they run about, um, I just I can't I don't see how they're going to do it really. That's why I was just thought every single league would just void it, even like in Belgium. I think they gave it to Club Bruges as well. I think so. I I just don't see any way around it really. So just as a verdict, going back to the Premier League, in terms of all of us are in agreement that Liverpool probably should be given the title, correct? Yeah, definitely. Yep. 
Yeah. Um, when it comes down to the relegation battles, what would you do in that scenario? Would you then, because there's different ways you could do it. You could do a tournament, you could do points by base. Um, again, though, I think Villa, uh, I'm going to say this on your behalf as well, Jacob, but Villa, I think you've got gold, uh, gold uh, games. Uh, what, you've got uh, games in hand? Got, yeah, we've got one game in hand, and if, right. if we win that, we're out the bottom for us. So, so there you go. That, that's another one that could be. So they, they shouldn't go down. Yeah, they shouldn't go down with a game in hand. I think that's yeah. wrong on any team. Like Villa shouldn't go down with a game in hand. I think the best way to do it for relegation is to score it on a points per game basis. Yep. If if not, then they're probably a relegation playoff, or maybe even a playoff between the bottom of the Premier League and the Championship to see who can get in yeah. the Premier League for next season. Because that's probably the best way to do sure. it. Because, yeah, yeah, like you said, you just put us great in, onto the next point is the championship then. What happens there? You've got people with the playoffs because the playoffs are everything in the championship. You've then got the champ- you've got the championship itself, which is very tight. It's not like the Premier League and the championship. But the Premier League, Liverpool have completely probably demolished the league. In the championship, West Brom and Leeds, I think about, I can't, I can have a look now to double check, but I think there's only a few points here. I don't even think there's too much of a big margin. So what would you do there? Championships are a whole other, a whole other story. Well, maybe you score it on a points per game basis and then on the points per game basis, then determine the playoff teams for relegation playoff. That could be a good option to do. And then have and the then, playoff games anyway. Yeah, so you've got your six championship teams that are in the playoffs, well, promotion slash playoffs anyway, and then do six teams from the Premier League, so ones that are in the bottom three and the ones above that that are on the verge of going up or down. Yeah, I think that's probably the best thing to do. I think that probably the biggest problem, though, with the whole situation is time. I mean, there isn't going to be much time. If you do this, you literally have to do this now because if you do August, the season starts again at the end of August, beginning of September. So yeah. you've got to try and fit it in a place and a time where you the players are still going to have the rest for the next season and set everything back up again. Because, I mean, it's, it's just... Um, like if we just if it goes like now, then at least if they they can get it done, and then maybe it will be all right for the next season, or they could, might have to just delay the next season by a month or so just to get everything back sorted to start a new season. But you you come across a great problem there as well because well it's not great but it is a problem because they they've also increased the amount of pre season now as well. So like yeah. t- loads of teams are touring everywhere, even having pre season camps and then pre season games. They knew the transfer window. What do you do about loans? The loans, the, uh, you ha- half the season you haven't played. There's all sorts of... T- we could go on and on about this yeah. this situation. It gets very messy. But the thing is, are we in... A, not, not trying to go political here, but are we in a situation where we are right now to say, all right, let's do something. Something needs to be done. I know, as I said about earlier on, that the 8th of May, the Premier League never decide something possibly, which is next Friday. Since then, from May, June, July, it's getting on. You know what I mean? So yep. are we in a situation where we should start now? Are we seeing that we are in a safer position or do we still wait? I think it's the governing body, FIFA. They've got to take control of it. it they've got to take control of everything. I right, say, so look, we've got to talk to like World Health officials. I think it should be down to FIFA as opposed to the Premier League, is what, what happens with everything. Because at the end of the day, like you think of scheduling as well. There's a, supposed to be a Winter World Cup in like 2022. That's going to mess up the scheduling completely. So, you know, who, know, who knows what's going to happen with but that? Yeah, like you said, the Euros. Yeah, they've been pushed back already, the Euros. But then you think about it, there's not that four-year four, four, four gap, isn't it, normally, between the... Um, yeah. I believe World Cup and Euros. That will nearly three, maybe even two. Like that's just for, for fitness wise. You've got to figure the players as well in terms of how they've got to be fit. I know they're fit. Yeah, they won't by be doing fit the... when they get back either. It's going to yeah. take a, f- a few weeks for them to get match fit anyway. No home workouts different to a football pitch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> so... it's, it's completely different. So I don't. Again, I just think the standards going to be poor and behind closed doors as well. I'm not sure how that will affect players. Yeah, so I think without an atmosphere, it kills it. Morale will definitely be down because, like, Massive, normally when yeah. you score, the whole buzz is so big. Like, you scored, they got the crowd screaming. It's like it gets everyone so yeah. excited. But I feel like if you score now, it's just going to be nothing. It's just yeah, silence exactly. and maybe a few coaches clapping and stuff. So they'll probably be Team. more down in that perspective. I mean, teams could lose some momentum as well. Like I was going to say, I mean, Liverpool. Yeah, I, I, go on. 
Leeds, Leeds have got on a tendency to fall apart at the last hurdle. <laughs> and it w- I, w- I wouldn't put it past them if it, it just happened so that with all this stuff going on, if they did start the season again, Leeds will slide Terrible. and not yeah. get to where they want to be. Also, another problem is a lot of football stadiums, West Brom being one, have actually uh, put themselves forward to actually do testing. So you have the whole car park at the moment, which is full of testing, and also some of the stadiums, the inside as well, being used by people. You've got to get them out to then get your football back in. Like Again, that takes time. You've got probably contracts to sign. You've got all sorts of word documentation. It just becomes a very messy situation. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, on on Twitter, there was something where I think Villa Park has turned into a maternity unit. Maternity yeah. you, can be, you can be born at Villa Park. I mean, who would want that? <laughs> yeah. What a place. <laughs> no, I wouldn't like that on my birth certificate. <laughs> also, uh, quickly, uh, apparently we've got six minutes and, ten, and 15 seconds left. Yeah, so when that meeting. goes, we'll end and we can redo it again if we want more. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Andrew, yeah. um, in terms of the sport, you talk about Formula One. Is there other sport that you know of as well that have already given the governing go to say, yeah, we're going to carry on with our sport as such? Uh, you know? I'm trying to think. Because um... what Formula One actually said, because I I, I'm a big Formula One fan myself, but I haven't really been following in terms of what they've, they've been doing. Uh, they said they were going to start in the beginning of July. Right. Uh, oh, pretty much the whole season's going to be uh, behind closed doors. But they're going to allow maybe fans towards the end of the season depending on the situation but they're basically just gonna but they're keeping in the same constants because normally they'd go here here there and everywhere but they're going to be doing all the races in europe then all the races in asia then all the races in like america just to reduce the traveling time yeah and they're going to do races twice on a track just to try and build up the the calendar up just but i'm not sure on any, any other sports that i know of but but i don't think it's confirmed fully yet but it's like a proposal and what it looks likely it could happen, but I'm not sure if it's 100% confirmed. Yes, this is happening. So, mm, interesting. I mean, tennis has got the Grand Slams cancelled now. Yeah. And uh, us- usually in like December they like determine the world number one by playing that mini tournament in London. So, whether they'll just go off the current season's basis and obviously the mini tournaments they have outside that to determine the world number one by that way. I think that's probably the best way forward for that. And in terms of NBA as well, I think I think the governor said he wants like the season to continue because like the playoffs are just about around the corner. So yeah. you know he he wants to get them playoffs done. I think so. I think that's probably the best way to go about that. So what about? I know it's not really a sport, but what about WWE? Because obviously that's that's been played behind closed doors. So how how has that like still managed to go ahead? I don't know, honestly. <laughs> in terms of the health of, of the athletes, I don't even know. Um, it's the most context war you can think of. It is. Yeah. And to be honest, I've just seen a video which angered me this morning, and it was a load of wrestlers that were in the Tampa Bay just delivering food and things. Fair enough. But they're standing there. Like, they're next to each other. And like, there's no two-meter gap. There's no... And you can't social distance in a wrestling match. Yeah. It's, it's physically not possible. So I don't know why, but... There's been some sort of relationship between obviously Vince Man and then also the Tampa government where they're they're having all of their shows at the moment. Like it's just ludicrous. Like one of their pay-per-views money in the back was meant to be at an arena, full obviously full sold out. They've been said doing it at the top of their headquarters on a roof. So like they're wrestling on a roof. Like it's just it's mental what they're doing uh, in terms of situations. But I think they're the only sport that I can think of that are really have just constantly carried on. They haven't really said, hang on a minute, we'll stop. Like, they, they've constantly been on the road. They haven't been on the road. So they've just been at the same place. But So do you say they're doing it in Tampa then? So they're all in one place? Like, they're all in a hotel, like so, all these wrestlers, and then they go into the arena to Not fight. necessarily. I think they are... I don't really know where they're living, but they may be living all over America, but they have to be around the Orlando area. They're doing taping. So the shows were live before. Uh, live, no crowd. But um, the officials then came, came together and said, well, we can't do that live because of all the situation of social distancing. We also had fans that came in to try get like sign autographs and things outside, yeah. which is not good. Um, so it is a very interesting situation. But there's another rival company there without boring it too much. It's also doing very much the similar things. There's constantly that war between the two at the moment. But I think you just was, say... Wasn't it a... Go on. Yeah, wasn't it a... Uh... 
a Florida governor that said it was essential, and that's why they're playing in Florida. Yeah, it's it, it, if I'm if I'm not speaking too political about it, there may have been something behind closed doors in terms of meetings. There may have been some sort of exchange of money. I don't know, but it, there has been there has been. It's very interesting to say the least what has happened because I, I read the other day like uh, the NBA season. They're looking at playing it at Disney World. I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah, so well, you, you, you look at it, the Universal Studios and Disneyland, they have lots where movies are either filmed in or they have TV show recordings in there anyway. anyway you could convert that to a basketball court. Like, you could. Yeah. Um, but, and like, they've got loads of hotels around that area as well for like teams to stay. So it's probably... Is but how do you rotate these place? people and one, keep social distancing and two, keep a two metre gap? Then again, that is America and they are they've got a leader that says they should you should put bleach in yourself and put yeah, UV light down your body pathetic. so yeah. let's talk English <laughs> let's keep it a bit more <laughs> but surely bit... actually quickly though but if, if everyone gets tested though and everyone comes out negative and no one's got it then surely they'll be able to be together which yeah. is why it, like if they just test everyone who in the NBA or whatever they're all fine then they can act normal now surely yeah yeah well, the, th the thing is as well, you have to listen. Whether you like it or not, you have to listen to the government because they're the ones that decide everything for us. Yeah. Um, whether it's scientists, whether it's medical officials, whether it's the government itself. So in terms of sporting, you can have that, say, that conversation, but it has to go through the government first. So if you're the Premier League, you can try and make a decision. But I believe it has to go through, through them. Uh, okay, so uh, moving on then. Obviously, you've, <laughs> you've got to factor this in as well. National teams. <laughs> How did you put national teams together as, as well as seasons now going forward? I'm going to open it up. What, what do you do? Do you just say, the problem is you say to the national teams, all right, go to your own club and then carry on with that season and then maybe come back for international training. But then the Euros are now coming up next year. <laughs> you can't train and do this. It's a mess. I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I can't even picture in my head how they're going to get around it. Scrap the mid-season international friendlies that no one cares yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. That, no like one cares league. about. Yeah, well, I mean, no one cares about international friendlies really. I mean, England playing Bolivia or San Marino in a pre-season friendly. There's just no point. Like, just it's a friendly. It doesn't it mean all. anything. It, it's it's yeah, just pointless. Just, it's a waste of time, waste of fuel, waste of effort. So, <laughs> yeah. Are, yeah, just, you, are you saying that you would carry on the season? Give the players the rest, go into pre season, start the next season, and then go straight into the Euros? Or would you give them at least some international matches? Uh, I'd give them a pre season of international matches. Before so the Euros? Can have, yeah, so they can have like international friendlies before well, and have, the Euros. Have no league next season. No, no yeah, have this the... will be at the same time. No, because they're still yeah. doing the Euros next year. Like, yeah. this, this next summer. So just, just don't send our players off to international break until the time comes for the Euros, and then obviously let the players play through the like season, this season or next season, whatever it is. Do do it that way, and just not have mid-season international breaks. It depends mm. if the season starts later next season. If they start carrying it on now. They might end up having to do two games a week. Like you've got to play on a Saturday and then you've got to play midweek. Because otherwise, that's which the championship teams schedule. know very much can be well, yeah, very much a problem. Exactly. So I don't know if like I mean Klopp moans about it enough anyway about having too many games. So if they're having to catch up, playing Monday, um, playing Saturdays and Wednesdays or Saturdays and Tuesdays, I think that that's going to be one of the ways that they can catch up. Because otherwise, Some the Euros just can get pushed further back, and the season's never going to start at the time it's supposed to start. Well, some teams haven't got the squad depth. Like you look at some teams like Wolves; they've, they've literally got no squad depth. Yeah. Have they, Andrew? They've got yeah, their starting very small squad, starting eleven, and then after the starting eleven, like if someone gets injured, Liverpool have got the same as well. Like their squad depth is pretty like thin on the yeah. ground, like. No wonder why Klopp doesn't like playing that many games. Yeah. He, he's worried about his best players getting injured. Yeah. But that's why he played all the kids in the, in the cup games. Because yeah. he, he was never going to risk not, not winning the league this season anyway. But I, I can't understand it. Because like, if he's that good of a manager, why, why doesn't he just like, you know, say, he's we're going for it best, all. Doesn't he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe that's for next season if whatever happens I don't know yeah 
it does mess it up because you you can't just think about this season. All right, let's get the season done. All right, sweet. You then got next season. You got next year's sporting events. Like sport constantly, you, it never pauses. It's always yeah. on it constantly. So it, it really can affect it. Um, one topic to finish off, which is completely different, I think, to the quarantine did. It's just one thing that I've thought of that America do very well. You've got NBA and you've got NFL and they do like a playoff situation. Do you think that we could do like where you got, you got, you play certain games. So it's baseball and NBA. I think I'm talking about here where you play say seven games and you have a best of seven. Do you do something like that in, in terms of the future? Maybe obviously we've been doing the league format for how long the Premier League has been out for, but do you like the format of the league and then just finish it? Or do you like the competition of say a best of seven series or something? Cause it allows for someone maybe in second or third to then try and win. I think if, if, if it's seeded, I think it might work. I'm better. talking. I'm talking the exact format how NBA and baseball they do it. So if everyone, if so it, where it's seeded, the top first, eight, the seeded yeah, first, top eight. Yeah. So like if you're top, you get like a bypass right. from the earlier rounds. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's the better way to do it. But I, mean, I, I have, I've only just got into basketball. Sorry to cut you off. And I actually enjoyed watching so many, so many of the same games with the same teams. Like I know they've had Golden State and the Cavaliers for so many years, but just yeah. seeing them seven games in seven games in a row, a different, a different. I just I like that format, and I I can't think because you get then. I guess you won't get the same realism as like Man City Liverpool. You get that twice a season. You get the same buzz. You get them say nine times in, in the same season. You get them twice a week. But yeah, th- how could yeah. that that would be something? Obviously, fitness would be would be something. I'm sure Klopp wouldn't well, M- be happy about it. But. MLS have got a playoff format. There you and they, go. they do it. They do it on a, an aggregate basis. I think right. between two games. Um, so they they play like home and away, and then they work it out. I just, way, I don't know, so I think so it's a different, it. so I was just seeing what you think about it, that mm. could that be implemented into our English leagues? I think I playoffs could work, because um, I mean, it, like looking at the NBA, I mean, it gives the chance, instead of like Liverpool winning the league by 20 odd points, it gives a chance for someone who isn't third, who is doing well or something, can actually, you know, win the title, and obviously it gives that drama throughout Sheffield like, United. <laughs> it's just you, know, you never know, Sheffield United could win the whole league because they win in the playoff bits, uh, but I think it could work. Um, because the whole he gives the the tension throughout the whole season. You know, you never get, oh, you know, because now we're like, oh, Liverpool's won the league, you know, but and then we just all kind of turn off. But then if yeah. you have that, well, anyone could win it as long as you finish in the top eight. Any anyone in that top eight could win it. So, it gives the whole drama. I guess it might might make people last like stick around more to watch the league towards the end of the season instead of, you know, winning by twenty odd points. Yeah, and giving up. Yeah, Jacob, what's your reckon? I mean. I f- I don't I don't know if they'll ever change the format of it. I think because yeah. they're just used to it anyway. And I think with the t- like TV money, they have a good way of being able to sort of get it in a way that they can televise most games anyway. So it, it depends ha- how sort of they work it around with TV. So I think the only reason the league will come back is because of money anyway. Mm. That that that's the main factor of it. It's all. a business so, at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. So but. The, Money is the deciding factor in it, and I think that's even they probably care more about that than the players' health anywhere. So yeah. they'll they'll end up just bringing it back and televising most games, sort of like Red Button, where you can choose what game yeah. you want to watch. Yeah, I think. I mean, like like, God, like I said earlier, you know, uh, the, just have it like Scotland have it for the Championship and Premier League, just for relegation. Mm. Yeah, I think Top that that's the only way. That's the only way where playoffs could work. I yeah. mean, yeah, I think that's the best way to go about it. And I can't see it happening. Mm. No, I, it, I, I never see it happen. More. But it's sad because it'd be quite. It could be quite, quite uh, something. They will At least try it for a season. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, it could. It. it could be worth a trial. I mean, I think it could be a fair way to do it than the Premier League. But then again, you think it might be a bit of an unfair advantage because the Premier League top of the. Uh, sorry, bottom of the Premier League, they get a load of ad TV revenue. Yeah, they they get like eighty, ninety million in the Championship, only get six or seven million a season. Yeah, so like it's probably a bit of an unfair advantage in terms of money wise because you might just have the same old teams in the Premier League constantly. Yeah, so I think yeah, it might not work in some ways. The I relegation think... could still work. It's just the top eight that do the playoffs, but yeah. 
I think the yeah. although the government may not want, I don't know, they haven't said anything specifically about this, uh, just generally our sport, you think about, it's just, like you said, Jake, it's a huge business. You've got the media company, so Sky yeah. Sports profits must be like, the, now they'll be going through the player finals for the championship, League One, League Two, so they have that money. You'd have then obviously your NBA coming up. You'd have all sorts of different sports. F Formula One constantly. Sport never normally stops. So you think about BT Sports, Sky Sports, all of those companies. They're not getting there. They're just putting they're out money. old archive games, etc. So we all want our sport back. <laughs> Let's yeah. be honest. Yeah. We can all agree on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. I think that's come to it, lads. So yeah. Um, Cheers. Yeah. Yeah, thank you guys for, for <laughs> watching. Um, thank you for your time, Andrew, Jacob, and Scotty. And uh, yep. if this works, I guess we'll be up again because we've got not much else to do here in lockdown. So there you go. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, thank yep. you all for watching. Thank you.